Hi everyone. So today we are going to discuss the important use case of assurance uh, of DNS center, I would say. So uh, our main focus would be on the demo side. So I have created a lab for you in which uh, I'll show you all the assurance related data, how to troubleshoot network issues, what is time travel, what is the path trace uh, API and different things, right? So the main focus is around the demo, but let's start with the theory first so that we can cover the complete end-to-end -end assurance uh, in this section, right? So started. So uh, our journey for DNS Center and this course is like that here specifically for assurance. So when we talk about assurance, it is the key feature which is generally used in, uh, I mean, key use case, which is uh, generally used to analyze the problem uh, within your network or within your client or within your applications. And for that, DNS Center is acting like a network monitoring server, or I would say it's more than network monitoring server. So if you compare uh, any of the network monitoring other vendor servers like uh, uh, solar wind or other than that so it is completely different here because here you give you get the end-to-end -end contextual visibility uh, of your network and its kpi right and when i say it's your it, uh, when i say it is about your network that covers everything for your wireless client wired client uh, your iot devices your applications it, itself, right? And uh, uh, what are the different health metrics? Based on that, uh, DNS Center identifies that this device is healthy or not, right? So a couple of KPIs are uh, available. And based on that, uh, we can get some healthy score and health metrics. So uh, most of the time, when we start working with this wireless type of troubleshooting, we always feel that where to start, right? Where to start our troubleshooting? So most of the time we ask uh, this type of questions uh, generally, and these questions actually gives us the granular information when we start troubleshooting. So each and every troubleshooting workflow has a kind of set of questions or kind of uh, basic understanding from where we can start. So when we start with the question, so initially we need to understand that are there multiple client experiencing any such issue or what? So suppose you have an incident in your company uh, that one user calls and one user login uh, a specific uh, uh, device and uh, is facing some issue or some of the application is not working properly for that user. So you need to check in a way where you start uh, uh, analyzing the basic thing first right so you first identify that whether that user is only affected or couple of users are also experiencing the same then you need to check the basic wireless controller connectivity whether it is up or not because at the end your control plane traffic always flow through the wireless controller so in my previous session i have discussed the workflow how uh, you can provision the wireless controller how you can uh, see the workflow of your list control plane in wireless and all. So that is the initial thing. First, you need to check the device is up and running or not. Then you need to check your access point is up and running. I know that this is the basic detail, but you also know that how to check. But generally, uh, this should be the flow when we are doing the troubleshooting, right? And uh, we need to check whether we have uh, a correct SSID configured on the wireless LAN controller and API or not, and API is broadcasting that SSID or not, right? And if it is broadcasting, then client is associated to that SSID or not. So these type of questions or these type of steps you can do in your day-to-day -day troubleshooting uh, job or uh, work, right? So whenever it comes with wireless, you can always start with this scratch and then you can go deep, deep into the uh, last stage and uh, then you can identify the issue and get some resolution and all. So that is a quite lengthy pro process. Generally, we start with the scratch only basic first uh, 
steps we do generally and then we can go deep and deep and deep into the issue and then isolate the issue and uh, create the uh, kind of containment uh, uh, and then resolve that issue but here with this sdxs uh, we can actually get end to end visibility of your client network and uh, applications now so most of the time your wireless issue can be divided into three these three main category like your ap to wlc communication that is the control plane communication right the rf related issues like uh, if ap is not uh, broadcasting proper rf and uh, the frequency is not uh, broadcast across the uh, area due to many reason right one could be the power uh, second could be the air so air is also one issue third would be your building and its wall so if the density of wall is too high then the rf cannot but i mean uh, it, it gives problems uh, when we talk about the rf frequency and uh, client issues so client issues comes like if client is not able to authenticate if that client is able to authenticate then uh, it's taking too much time of sending the data so there could be any issue but the most uh, i mean most three category we just identify is this only and based on that your wireless troubleshooting works so when we talk about wireless assurance so uh, the prerequisite would be this so as i told you first you have to have your dns center up and running right whether it is your single node cluster or three node cluster uh, irrespective of that it is uh, it is running and uh, then you should have to have your network discovery so your device must be there inside the inventory uh, you have the proper uh, software which is recommended and uh, once you have everything like once you assign that device to the site and also explore uh, export the floor map and also put the access point on the floor map your wireless workflow would be done most of the time i mean this is the basic workflow and basic prerequisite then further you need to configure all the things related with S ssid rf profile and all which i uh, yesterday i showed you but today I'll, as well i will show you how to do it but on high level this is the prerequisite which uh, should be there initially before proceeding the assurance of wireless so in assurance there are couple of dashboards which are which have created for uh, network admin to solve the uh, issues or i would say troubleshoot the issue so in depth troubleshooting you can uh, get it related with onboarding issues or um, uh, your device monitoring also can be done whether the device is performing well or not then any any x enable insight you can get from the contextual and correlation of the data so as i told you that uh, most of the time syslog and uh, snmp is kind of pooling uh, mechanism right so here uh, in dns center it is more like a push based mechanism where your network devices is pushing the data to the dns center and dns center will analyze that data and represent that data to the graphical and contextual view on the dashboards so those dashboards would be like your health dashboards client client 360 device 360 the network time travel that is really important because if you go back in time and you want to see whether uh, before seven day like this user is experiencing what type of issue compared to today or this network device is compared uh, this network device is experiencing what type of issue uh, prior to two days or three days or likewise based on that you can identify and understand uh, in the past and correlate that issue in present as well so that is really important to troubleshoot and uh, issue troubleshooting so issue troubleshooting comes with the guided remediation and it also gives the steps of uh, different uh, troubleshooting workflow where it will give you co complete step by step process like how to troubleshoot and uh, you can also run command from the dns center itself related with show command right like show ip route or whatever uh, it gives 
you can perform it on the fly and you can get the output you can understand okay i have routing in place i don't need to worry on routing then you can proceed with the other flow so that is the kind of uh, high level uh, overview i would like to give and uh, uh, the other thing is this like when we talk about wireless use cases so that doesn't mean that for wired client we are not getting any sort of information for wired kind client as well we are getting all the specific information related with this uh, client experiencing or application performance and all but mostly for wireless uh, you can get some idea around the network coverage cap coverage and capacity so when we talk about network coverage and capacity that means uh, your rf related settings your signal to noise ratio your air quality and uh, the broadcast uh, whatever the rf is broadcasting your access point is broadcasting what frequency and all you can get some idea on that and you also can get suppose a user is not uh, able to get proper throughput right and uh, you can check everything whether that user is getting correct signals or not and uh, if he that user is getting correct signal then you can proceed with the other troubleshooting workflow if it is not getting the proper signal then you can check the access point uh, placement on the floor map right and based on that you can move the access point and you can um, change some of the settings of rf and then based on that uh, user can get the uh, correct rf other than that signal to noise ratio so that comes with this air quality and a couple of interference related parameters so when any floor has that type of uh, poor quality air or i would say uh, different interference right like if machine is running keep and uh, continuously and if it is generating some kind of frequency and some kind of noise uh, which generally uh, interfere with the wireless rf and uh, frequency then your bandwidth and throughput may get degraded so that type of uh, thing you also can get some idea about uh, snr ratio if you check uh, so apart from that there are a couple of other parameters which i will show you in the demo in the live demo right and i have one user is also connected uh, so i'll show you each and everything like how a user is facing an issue and how to troubleshoot that issue uh, apart from that uh, so here you can see on the second stage we have network device monitoring so that is a typical way of monitoring the network in traditional network we generally do do it with the help of different type of legacy nms systems and uh, it is based on the uh, an snmp polling and uh, network polling type of things right here we are using the telemetry that is more kind of push based mechanism where each and every network device which is capable of uh, running telemetry that device will push the uh, trigger i mean push the issues or update or anything whatever the incident that device has or any change if that device is facing related with its uh, kpi then it will push the information to DNS center and then DNS center will uh, try to analyze and uh, give the contextual information. So that is related with that. Uh, the third point is client onboarding. Onboarding. So it is really important as well because when you onboard any client, right? So you have a couple of things to verify whether the time taken to onboard of that client so if client onboarding time is too high then your user experience will get degraded and uh, in that as well you can do some sort of troubleshooting whether dhcp is taking too much time or uh, whether once the ip is assigned then how my user is going to authenticate and if authentication is taking too much time then other than that, you can find other workflow uh, related with frequency and uh, uh, SSID related changes. But it is again really important when we talk about the client experience or user experience, because most of the time we want that type of wireless infra in our company or in, in anywhere 
where we start our mobile Wi-Fi or laptop Wi-Fi and within few seconds, we need some sort of connectivity, right? So that is the ideal uh, way of onboarding the client. But in case some of the user is facing some more time to onboard, then there could be an issue. And for that, DNS Center gives you the correct workflow to troubleshoot. Uh, and you can also do a kind of packet capture uh, within the DNS Center dashboard. So that is a really nice feature, I would say, because on DNS Center, it gives you dot .pcap uh, option where you can generate the packet capture. And based on that, you can identify the event uh, related with the onboarding sequence. So this client onboarding and client, client experience is uh, run hand to hand. And the last one is application performance. So most of the time in traditional network, we see that uh, when any application is not working correctly, network team will always throw the ticket to the application or software team that this application is not working. We have the correct reachability. We have our ping is working, trace route is working, everything is working, right? And uh, when you ping, you find the latency. And uh, uh, when you trace, you find the loss litter, uh, loss, uh, jitter and delay, everything you will get. Uh, and uh, you also can do some sort of packet capture and everything. But in that, if you don't find anything, then the but obvious answer is uh, application has some issue. Application team or software team needs to fix that issue. And uh, there could be that type of issue as well on the application side, right? So when we talk about the troubleshooting, so we can't delay that type of uh, issue uh, when we uh, discuss that with other team and all. So it takes too much time to resolve. Application team also check that uh, their connectivity, the server hosted and data center and all, and the code as well, right? But the idea behind this application performance, which has been added here in DNS Center is like that. Uh, so most of the time, DNS Center uh, uh, can identify which application user is experiencing or uh, exploring, right? So whether user is exploring Microsoft Office or YouTube, so DNS Center can get that type of data. Uh, when you try to troubleshoot that application, you can get some idea. And based on the NBAR2 license, so that is again conditional. So that is device specific and uh, that license must be installed on the routing device, uh, whatever device you have in the network, SDXS or uh, uh, your fabric, right? The device must capable of having NBAR2 license. So NBAR2 works with this application classification. So it has a couple of classification by default in DNS Center, around 1400 or 1500 application. Uh, by default, uh, which, which are classified as a category uh, in different categories, right? Like business, relevant, irrelevant. So uh, it will work only and only when your uh, network routing device has NBAR2 license. And uh, when user try to forward the data, so data must be flown from endpoint to that application. Then and only then, based on the NetFlow collector and uh, NBAR2, it will fetch the information related with application, which application user is trying to experiencing or exploring. But this is about the well-known application like YouTube or uh, Microsoft Office 365 or Cisco WebEx or anything like that. If uh, your company is having, company is having a private application, intranet application, right? So for that, uh, it gives the specific IP along with the port. So most of the time application, whatever the application company has hosted in data center that has the specific IP and a particular port number. So based on that also you can categorize and classify. And uh, if that application is causing the issue, it will give the uh, information. Uh, so we'll discuss more on that. Uh, I'll show you one demo on that as well on application performance. But that is the idea. So this is not just the NMS or uh, you can say it will not give you that only limited information, but it gives you 
wide variety of information in contextual way whether uh, so you don't need to waste your time to find the specific uh, tiny detail on the network by logging hop by hop and get some information so this is the kind of overall, overall health uh, network health uh, dashboard look like so you can see on the left hand side you have network devices so 94% network devices are in the healthy stage right and some of the devices are unhealthy. Total devices are 33 out of two is unhealthy. So you can get some information why my two devices are in an unhealthy stage uh, or state. And uh, if you hover your mouse on the right hand side, you can see your network devices are being categorized. Your 33 network devices are being categorized here only. So seven, you have routers, five core switches, seven access switches, six distribution switches, one wireless controller and seven access point. If you total, it would be around 33. And out of 33, you can see two are in the unhealthy state. So here the yellow sign show you, it is in the fair uh, state of the health, not good, right? So also it gives you the information that due to high interference, uh, the two access point are in the fair healthy state, not healthy or good, right? So uh, now you can, Dig deep, dig deep into the two access point and try to troubleshoot what could be the issue, how to resolve that and all. So you don't need to worry on every, each and every thing. You just directly go on these two access point and start troubleshooting it, right? So that is the kind of contextual information you get. And it saves so much of your time when you are doing troubleshooting. Now uh, for wireless... Uh, hello, sir. <laughs> Sir, uh, so this uh, this health uh, so this health related data is uh, receiving DNA center via SNMP or over uh, ICMP. Uh, so it, it has a couple of things health related. So a couple of traps has been configured like SNMP traps on your network devices. Then NetFlow is also one of the key important factor. And when we talk about wireless related thing, so uh, telemetry uh, settings are being configured on the specific wireless controller and access points. So it is kind of combination, not just SNMP, not just NetFlow, not just telemetry, but everything. And uh, based on that, it will give you the information. And in uh, this uh, terms healthy network devices, is it in terms of reachability and uh, live status or it's related to all uh, resource utilization Correct. as well? Correct. So it, it, it falls with a couple of uh, KPI that includes the interference. When we talk about wireless, then it, it, it includes different KPI, different parameters. When we talk about routers, then it has the different parameters like reachability, uh, memory utilization, CPU utilization, interface drop count. Uh, so, so many KPI, I'll show you in the live demo, but yeah, it's not just the reachability. So traditional NMS gives you thus just reachability and all, but here you give uh, you get all the information, uh, including so many KPIs, and it is getting increased and increased day by day based on the uh, image upgrade or I would say a version upgrade, right, of DNA. So the previous version has low or little less KPI. The newer version has more KPI. So based on that, you can always find the new update and all and always your network would be in the healthy stage and uh, focus on a couple of KPI. Now, uh, wireless health uh, in Cisco DNA assurance. So as I told you, right, we are not just giving you, or Cisco DNA center is not just giving you the reachability related KPI, but it consists of a couple of things. So if we talk about WLC, so WLC falls, uh, I mean, it, the KPI would be this, you can see memory utilization, free time score, free memory buffers, work queue element, then packet pools, link errors, so many things uh, considered. And based on those parameters, measure the device health, whether this device is healthy or not. For AP as well, you can see a couple of APIs mentioned, the RF noise score, air quality score, interference, radio utilization, memory utilization, so many things, right? Uh, for uh, router switches as well, yeah, it has uh, this type of KPI, excluding the wireless related parameters. 
and uh, for wireless health in DNS installations, so you can see uh, the, for client, client has this type of health score, the complete client end-to-end -end 360 score, which gives the onboarding connectivity and individual health score. So uh, we'll see in the demo when we go on the client 360 dashboard, then and only then it would be much more clear what is the health score and how that client is measured. So when we talk about a user, suppose user A, right? If user A is in the poor health stage, so based on which KPI DNS center has assumed that user is in poor health stage, we can find it in the demo. So again, it's time for demo. So let's uh, let me share my screen one second for demo. So today we will cover end-to-end -end assurance, and uh, then later we'll think on the other pending uh, topics. Just one second. I hope everyone can see my screen. If yes, then please say yes. Then yes, sir. Can... Yes, sir. It's visible. Okay. So this is uh, my own internal lab. Right, uh, and uh, this is based on the version 2.3.3.4, that is the latest and greatest version of DNAC. Um, and uh, you can see the dashboard. So the UI would uh, look different when you compare with the version to version, right? So, but the workflow will remain the same. So you don't need to worry on that. You just need to understand the workflow. Uh, and also you can see the dashboard and the home page. It, it is quite similar, right? Like previously we saw that assurance summary, it gives the overall uh, health related status, the critical severity related issues like P2, six uh, P2 cases or six P2 uh, incident is already running in this network, right? And four P1 net, uh, uh, critical issues are on uh, running. So if you want to troubleshoot, you can come and start troubleshooting from here itself, right? And uh, that is the overall uh, network screen snapshot. And again, this tool is and all, which we yesterday saw. Now, let me directly jump into the assurance. So when once we click on the assurance, you will find a couple of things. Mostly we'll focus on the dashboard and uh, issue settings and health score settings, right? These two and this uh, couple of dashboards. Let's let's go to this health and then just one second. So as I told you that this is the uh, global map where you can get some idea uh, whether your device, what device are performing where, and uh, I mean how many devices are in the healthy stage. Total, I have one twenty one device that that that's are categorized into this category: router switches, distribution switches, access switches wireless controller and access point that are the network devices. And you can also check or change the site specific hierarchy. If you have a couple of hierarchy, you can select the hierarchy and then based on the hierarchy, you can select the hierarchy. So it will give you the specific site related information, right? Oh, so sir, this categorization DNA center will do itself or a network admin need to be, uh, need to do it. Which, which categorization? I mean, sir, router, course, switch, no, distribution, it, switch. That, that DNS center will do. You don't need to worry on that. But how it will do, that I'll tell you. So when you click on the provisioning and inventory, right? Under inventory, uh, whenever you try to provision any of the device, at that time, it gives you an opportunity to mark that device as a specific device with a specific role. You can see there is a option of device role here. You can see. So that role you need to give when you are trying to onboard. So if you want to change the role, suppose uh, this is my wireless LAN controller, right? So I can change the role. Uh, I, I mean, based on the connectivity where that device is connected, right? So uh, you can change uh, like unknown. Suppose if you don't know, you can make it unknown. Or you can make it core or distribution and border. That is the basic thing. Then after that, in the fabric, when we go and create the fabric, that demo is pending. I will show you because for that, I need to create a lot of things uh, in my lab for uh, uh, kind of uh, scenario. And then I can show you how to create a fabric. So I guess probably next lecture or next weekend, next to next weekend, 
we will start the fabric related information and demo and uh, i will cover all the things related with fabric and uh, then you can get more understanding but just focus on wireless as of now assurance so here uh, if we click on the fabric you have an option to select the specific role like if you click here here you can see the role border node control plane node edge node so once you select the node it will be categorized automatically when you provision the network. If you have wireless LAN controller, then you have an option of WLC as well. So the category and categorization, you don't need to worry much on that, but whenever you are provisioning and creating the fabric at the time, you need to give and assign the specific role to the specific device based on the connectivity. Now, here you can see wired clients. So uh, you can get some idea that, okay, 55 uh, users are connected through cable, right, wired. So out of that, 95 are in the healthy stage. So you can see also if you hover your mouse, it also gives this information. You can read and uh, get some idea. And that score is calculated over five minutes of interval. Every five minutes, it gets updated. So that is not live score, but yeah, after five minutes, it will update the latest one. Same like that, here you can get some idea, like how many devices are running and all. And also graph is also showing. Okay, now, so here, uh, this newer release has this feature, enable auto refresh. So after five minutes, uh, the client, uh, the number will change. Right, but in previous Linux uh, iOS, uh, sorry, image version, it didn't have the type of uh, new feature. So manually, you need to refresh your web browser and then it gives the information. Now, uh, you can also create the timeline. So this is from last 24 hours. If you want from last three hours, you can apply and get that info. Right. So based on your area of interest or based on your troubleshooting approach you can always come and check the information the same thing here with type so i have eight triple a servers so that means uh, different eight triple a connected with this dnac so if i click here it gives me the the information just one second taking time so here you can see the triple H related triple H related uh, transactions right and the, the different things but we'll go uh, later on that but let me first cover this overall head now on the downside you can see top 10 issues by type so you can see uh, the issue name here the category as well and the severity so here the severity is one p1 that means the most critical thing you need to focus on. And you can see it is related with reachability. The device itself is down or the interface itself is down, right? So you can't do anything. You need to somehow do the troubleshooting if uh, anyone has manually shut down or whatever the issue. Or if device got faulty, you need to up, uh, do the RMA and change the device. So there could be the severity one cases or issues you can see. Uh, the P2 cases, P3 cases, everything you can get some idea. And uh, when it has registered, you can see the information as well, right? And how many times that issue occurred so far? So here you can see two times. So that level of information you get. So you just imagine how much time you can save uh, for this type of uh, troubleshooting, right? Now, suppose if you want to troubleshoot it from here itself, just click on the issue, right? It will give you the complete information. See, just read the description. Interface this is down on network device this. That network device is uh, hosted here on the site. You can see this is the site address, floor, everything it is mentioned, right? The device name is also mentioned. Then which device family is the device? belongs to it is also mentioned everything is mentioned right which interface you need to focus on that only now if you click on that 
and you also get some idea that device is acting as a distribution that is very critical right click on that here it gives the more information around the contextual data now you know that this device is having problem and this interface is down so you need to go to this device only right then and only then you can up, uh, make that particular port as unshut or whatever based on your troubleshooting so click on that that particular device and it will uh, show you the device 360 and i'll tell you what is device 360 it is loading okay so you can see this is the device 360 dashboard so directly from the health dashboard you clicked on the device and it will show you this device 360 dashboard so in device 360 dashboard you have all the information related with this device so so you can see this is the time travel graph right so that is showing you the last 24 hour of status right and if you just hover you can see uh, the device health is three why three the reason is this memory utilization is 98 percent cpu utilization is 99 percent and on data plane you can see three different types of link error uh, the link discard and other type of error showing yeah right and the connectivity wise as well you can click on that it will give the null i mean no reachability so that is the kind of graph which known as the time travel and that will come only on the 360 pages so whether it is your device 360 client 360 or application 360 it will give you this time travel graph and you can also go back in time suppose as of now i am having 24 hours i need to go back by seven days apply that so this gives me the seven day information so from last seven day it is loading actually we'll see once it loads so from last seven day the, the device is getting heavy or having that issue you can see the uh, cpu utilization is being changed every time we hover our mouse right and date is also changing time is also changing everything is getting changed so that is the time travel now uh you can see the issue so issue description we already know right and other than that other uh, issue is this horse flaps uh so flapping is also observed in one vlan but first first thing first uh this is the thing we need to troubleshoot it and also the physical topology you can get the idea right that this device is connected to where now if you come here and see the event log so you can see this type of message or logs are showing or i guess this is the mac flap notification related with flapping and due to that the memory and cpu will utilize 100 percent how this topology uh, uh, learning this dns center so that is the contextual information right like whenever any device has uh, any snmp trap installed uh, all the logging related information comes here then netflow shows the information uh, related with device and device health and the connection whatever the connection that device has based on that dns center has different algorithm inside and it will build this topology right so we are not going to discuss the algorithm or thing but you need to know the use case of the particular dashboard so this is how you can do and troubleshoot it here you can get some idea that host uh, with this mac address in vlan 31 is flapping between port this and this so you can try and troubleshoot you can disconnect the host and then you can check other than that we have this path trace mechanism you can click on run the path trace you can just try to ping from source and destination like any destination you have uh, whether it is reachable or not you can try and check whether the traffic is permitted between these two uh, source and destination or not you can choose the port as well like protocol which protocol you want to use tcp or udp or if no you can just ignore it directly and uh, here with this path trace it also gives the uh, 
workflow kind of thing. So if during the path, if that uh, device has any access list configured, which is blocking the communication, then also it gives the information, right? You can see the, you can mark the QoS interface and device related stats and you can start. So based on that, you can also get some idea that uh, my uh, connection from this user to this server is blocking. And here the reason is access list. So we'll see the, information from this access point to WSC, the control plane will go through CAPPEP only, right? That's we discussed in initial class. Now, the data plane will forward from the uh, uh, particular part uh, here, which is mentioned. And when data packet hit, uh, or sorry, hit on this interface, it will give this information. You can see that access list 120 is configured and it has this deny. Uh, reason, which is this deny 40, 40 deny IP any any. Due to that, the com communication is not getting established between this IP and this IP. And just imagine if you want to try out a kind of this type of thing and troubleshoot it, you need to go hop by hop basis. Where is my packet is dropping, right? And based on trace route, you can identify, but then also, you need to do a manual CLI and go back and troubleshoot each and everything. But here you can do within the few clicks. Other so, than sir, that, sir, to perform this trace route, we we have to come inside this uh, path, right? Which path? Uh, uh, here. How you came here, sir? Can you? Okay. Inside so a device, right? Yeah, device 360 has all the information. So oh, whenever okay. you want to do path trace or whenever you want the nitty gritty of any uh, de nitty gritty of any device specific information, you can come and uh, check. So that is same for all the things, not with device only. It is same like application 360, client 360 and everything, right? Pension, right. Uh, here as well, uh, you can see de de detailed information of that device. So you can see this is the kind of stack and the uh, utilization is graph is showing. Memory utilization graph is showing. Everything you can see. And then based on it, you can troubleshoot further, right? So sometimes you need to physically try to troubleshoot is when that type of issue. Suppose this host is having issue. So you can either shut down the port or uh, uh, shut down the VLAN and then you can connect that host to other VLAN and other port. So for that, you need to do this manual as well. But on high level, you can get the information very quickly. You can run the command from here as well. There is a command runner. So you can do all sort of things. So I see interface brief. Uh, okay, command is blacklisted as of now uh, in my lab. Uh, but on high level, everything you can perform from here. So that was the device 360, which we discussed and overall health, right? Now, uh, let me go back and try to uh, show you other than that issue. Fabric connectivity ties that we discussed, okay. No, that is another new issue, right? So you can see Fabric Edge lost the connectivity to ICE server, right? And in physical network where the site is mentioned, uh, device type is this, right? How many times that issue occurred? 63. Click on that. You will get some information here. It is done. People have survived. This has no reachability. It is done. So you can come and click on their device, this device. So it will again falls uh, device 360, right? The same thing you can see. Issues, utilization of memory, link error, everything. Connection is down. The device name, model, the management IP, site, which software that device is running on, the role of the device. Everything you can get some idea, right? The physical connections as well path trace, detailed information, everything.
and then you can troubleshoot further. Uh, sir, this is Krishna. Yeah, Krishna. Uh, so if I want to ping any IP, let us say from DNS center twice, so we need to go to that run command option or any other option is there? Yeah, you can uh, go to run command option as well. So run command option works when, uh, so suppose uh, you are in specific device, right? From that device, you need to ping to something. Mm -hmm. So you okay. need to click on that device or suppose you know the device name. So you can always search here. You can type the device name like uh, BN or whatever the device. Border not. So I have this device, right? So if I type and search that device, click on that. Mm -hmm. I have this option called device specificity. Click on that. Mm -hmm. Run command. Here you have an option. Click on run command and try to ping wherever you want to ping. Like this. Okay. That uh, IPs are not showing. Dot dot. It is showing. Yeah, yeah. The, it is some issue with that, but it is pinging. So you can do kind of command, whatever command you have. You have access. You can try anything. Okay. Other than run command, any other option is there for reachability checking? Yeah, yeah. You can try to search command runner. There is a tool. Command runner here under tools. You can click on okay. command runner. Click on that. You can okay. type and search the IP, select the device, whatever the thing you want to do. Right. So under tool, there is an option of command runner. You can try and check. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. No worries. So uh, that was the uh, overall highlight I, I wanted to show you. Now, uh, with this respect, uh, with this is uh, issue, I told you, right? It also gives some of the suggested actions and guided remediation. So let's cover that guided remediation and suggested action point. So here you can see there is an option of suggested action. Click on that. So DNS Center gives the option or kind of troubleshooting workflow which you can use if you want to. Otherwise, you can do troubleshoot by your own self and uh, you can try to resolve. But here, the basic idea is that if uh, you want to get some insight, like how to troubleshoot or from where I can start, so you can check the connectivity is up or not. So it gives this information. Now it also told you that verify the route to ICE server because we lost the connectivity to ICE server. That is the issue, right? Lost connectivity to the ICE server. So it also gives this information, verify the uh, connectivity or route, sorry. So ICE is up, then check this. Uh, here, how to check? You can see this command is also, it gives okay. you, you can type and click run. It will run on your behalf and give you the output, whether the connectivity is, uh, or routing is in place or not. Okay. If any routing is not in place, it gives the cross and you can check the next stop. Everything you can check from here. You don't need to log into device and do all the things most of the time. Now, uh, the third step, it gives the IGP uh, adjacency and neighborship, which is up and running or not. So it gives you that option. You can try and run the command. So it checks the ISIS adjacency and everything. So here it is. EIGRP, it gives this information, right? Now, after this, suppose you did troubleshooting also by suggested action, you troubleshoot the uh, issue and still you can't figure out. So you have always have an option to reach Cisco, right? So Cisco tech is there. You can raise the case from here itself and reach out to Cisco person and then Cisco will help in that type of issue which you can't able to solve. So that is the overall simplest way. And the idea behind that is to provide the simplest simplicity and saving your time on troubleshoot. So in this now, case, we don't want to log into any devices. Looks that like. is the idea. That is the idea. Yeah. Correct. That is the idea of uh, uh, bringing this controller-based architecture. Uh, but yeah, on some type of issue, you always need to log into CLI. So, uh, mm -hmm. It is based on the issue to issue. So I can't say that you always need to do all the things from DNS center, but that is the intent of Cisco that you can log in to CLI uh, very minimal. 
Okay. Uh, so, so is it like okay. we will get some alert also, like uh, if it is any logs or something? Yeah, comes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we'll get you can get, also. Yeah, you, you have tools. an option. Uh, you have an option of webhook where you can configure the webhook, and uh, with that webhook, you can get the email notification. You can also configure the phone alert as well. So that is a kind of option uh, you can create and uh, you can integrate it with the NS Center as a platform and uh, you can get the notification. Uh, so go with here. Uh, you have shown some command uh, to the device to run the basic uh, uh, OSPF neighbor or EAGRP neighbor status. So can we add our own command? Uh, no, integrated no. no, no, you can use command runner and try, uh, try it out all of your personalized or customized command. But on suggested action, DNS Center gives you the basic information like what DNS Center feels about that issue and uh, how to troubleshoot as per the controller. So that is the idea. For your customized command, you can also al always check your command runner and try it out. Okay. Now click on the network. So that was the overall part and we discussed the device 360. Now we have separate dashboards of network, client and application. So for network, we have this device. You can see network devices uh, and the health score as well. You can see and uh, how many devices are in poor or healthy or fair state. You can identify from here. And you can hover your mouse, you can get some information related with ongoing issue, which device and all, right? But more detail, we have that information here only. Now, uh, so that is uh, on high level categorization of router, switches, sex point, wireless controller, and everything. Uh, so suppose if I want to check this access point, I can click here, okay? I can click on that, which is showing it poor. And I can identify with poor. When I click poor, I can get the device name as well. This device is acting as poor. Right. Why? Because the radio utilization is 70% on both the frequency, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Which is the device model? This is the device model. What is the device OS? You can see this is the device OS. Right. So, what is the version, IP address, where the device is hosted? Right. You can come now. Once you click here, it will again redirect you to the device 360. And from that device 360, you can start troubleshooting. But the idea is that the, on this network dashboard, is you can get all sort of information related with your network devices. And you can dig deep into the specific network device. And then it will re redirect to the device 360, the same thing which we just explored, right? Now, when utilization as well, uh, the uplink, whatever the uplink you have, the utilization, you can get some information, some stats, and you can always get more information, uh, trends as well. So if someone likes this data and all, they want to play it around with this type of dashboard for access point as well. So number of clients which are associated by access point, so sometimes your customer or client may face poor customer experience or degraded bandwidth or throughput because the oversubscription of your uh, users on single access point. So if number of users are uh, are are very high, then uh, your customer or client will face that issue. So you can get some idea that on this access point, I have this many clients. Just hover your mouse, you can get idea. Then troubleshoot if you want to, or get some information. So overall thing you can see, so many thing in detail, how many access points are up or down, the three devices are down, 42 are up, right? Like number of AP by high interference, you can see change the frequency, you can get some idea. Now here, this is also interesting. So here you have- Sir, does it also show the sources of the interference? Yeah, yeah. When you click on that, one second, let me click AP by high interference, right? So one second, go on the access point. Click on any of the access points because 
here or i guess we have this access point itself down uh access point access point okay now i can click on any of the access point so this is time travel right you can see and change the time and uh, get some idea now what was your question tell me sir my question is suppose there is a ap in my land and uh, there are some other APs um uh, nearby there which is not in my control and uh, from from those my uh, my rf environment is getting in fear so yeah can we so, yeah. can we see the sources from where the rf signal is coming and uh, from no which, you can't uh, you can't get that type of information uh related with other rf but you can get the data related with your ap rf so here you can see when i click device information under rf so you have your own channel utilization, traffic utilization, noise, and air quality. So based on this graph, you can identify, OK, my noise is getting increased, or my channel utilization is getting increased, or my interference is getting increased. Then you need to identify by your own whether it is coming with uh, which reason, right? Whether the power is issue or uh, any APs, other APs broadcasting some uh, Signal no, got it, sir. Got it, got it. Yeah. And uh, sir, uh, is it possible to export this report? Suppose I'm getting Correct. a complaint from any yeah. site and they are saying my my uh, laptop is working very slow, Wi-Fi is working very slow. Yeah. And I found uh, through this uh, analysis, your channel is uh, uh, utilizing from the interference signal. So can we export this report and send yes. them? Yes, yes, there is an option of report in the NS Center where you can create the customized report and get some information. Also, you are having this information of export. Wherever you find this export, you can export the detail of the proper or whatever the device is impacting. Oh, great. Sir. And sir, one thing more, sir, uh, this data will be live, uh, I mean, real time or it will be historical data as well? Whatever you want. So here I'm seeing the, from last 24 hours of data. If I check and click the ten, three hours of data, so by every five minutes, this data gets updated, which I told you, right, initially. Mm, right, sir, right. Fine, sir, fine. Sir, fine. this is Krishna. So let us say Cisco 9300 switch. Mm. Everything is showing in the Cisco DNA center, but what are the mandatory configuration must be available on the switch to mandatory. show that let us yeah so snmp configuration or any other configuration correct, like that correct so all the device controllability configuration must be there when i say device controllability during the time of discovery demo i clearly mentioned what is the device controllability and what is the specific information uh, which is uh, needed on the device so that your device can be uh, easily sync with the dns center so that is one thing uh, second thing is Whenever you are provisioning any device, uh, that device must have the correct license. So to run some of the advanced assurance use case, the device, device should have the proper license. So that is also mandatory. If the device does not have the license, it will not give you the this type of contextual information. Right? Okay. Yeah. And net flow and everything also. So during the provisioning, that configuration can be pushed so that you can check so that's why we told right the prerequisite so all the prerequisite which i told you that must be satisfied and then you can start exploring this okay all right so yeah here you have an option of uh, filter out all the device based on the overall health based on the type and uh, whatever way you want to filter out you can check whether you want a get you want a kind of report where it is uh, having only good health devices, you can export it, select that, and based on that you can represent yourself to management and over. Or if you want all the device which has poor health, specifically for wireless control, you can export that troubleshoot whatever you want to do. You can do it from here. When you click on this device, it will redirect you to device 360 that we will discuss. We have already discussed. And in device 
360, how to troubleshoot, how to get some insight, uh, I showed you, right? So that's how you can get some information and then you can troubleshoot by your own. Suggested action will be based on the DNA center information or whatever the DNA center algorithm has, that information, it provides the limited way of uh, uh, troubleshooting approach. But the ultimate troubleshooting you need to do, right? At the end, you are the network engineer. So that is the idea. Now let's go to client. On the client, you can see the client-related information is also mentioned. And before starting with this section, let's have a break of uh, five minutes. Since so 12, 16, uh, we'll meet around 12, 20, right? Four minutes of break. Okay, sir. Everyone is there? Shall we start? Yeah, that's yes, sir. Okay, okay. Cool. So uh, this is related with client. So same like the network, we have this client related dashboard and uh, you can see the overall information related with your client. So whether it is wireless or wired client and uh, you can get some idea related with this, the total client and one client is in inactive, right? So that is due to that, your score will be 90%. And uh, here for wired as well, you have 56 total, 55 is connected, one is not connected. So that's how you can get some information. If you want to dig deep into detail, then you can click on view detail. Uh, it gives more information, right? Like how many active clients, how many are onboarded, what is the fair connectivity, 4% or authentication related issue, 0.80%. Now, the top reason of failure, most of the time due to authentication, the client is not getting connected. Other than that, you can find DHCP related issues. Then uh, the location where most of the time uh, the issue occur. So you can find the location as well. So you can always focus on the specific area and you can try to troubleshoot. And what access point is ca causing, which access point is causing most of the time issues and all. And what type of device is giving the host related issues. So that information is also getting. Now you must be wonder, uh, wondering that why we are getting this level of information, like uh, Workstation is Linux, phone is iPhone, iPad. So that is because on ICE, uh, based on the authentication, ICE captures the contextual information, context of the device. And that context has the information of your uh, device detail inside the metadata. And that metadata can be uh, understandable uh, by DNS center through PX grid. And then you can get that information. So everything is connected. And for profile and uh, profiling and context, uh, you have to have some sort of license on ICE. And based on that, you can get that information, right? So, but on high level, if you have everything, you can get that type of uh, information. And based on that, you can troubleshoot. Now, uh, if you see here, you have client name as well, right? So that is also comes when the client is authenticate itself, uh, based on the authentication credentials. And you can see how nitty gritty detail it is giving you, uh, the device type, the health score, why health score is two, you can see the onboarding issue, right? Onboarding is failing. Which access point that client is connected to, you can get that information, site and SSID, which SSID that client is trying to connect. Now, from here, suppose you want to try, try it out and troubleshoot something for this client, right? You can click on the client and it will redirect you this client 360 page. And on this time travel graph, you can get the history of the client from last seven days. You can click apply. It will give you the time travel graph. So you can see previously that uh, client was performing well, right? Now suddenly here for this particular cycle and in between this cycle, two times 
that client of faced his experience of failed status failed and health score is two here as well as here right so you always go back in time and check this history you can go up to 14 days back right maximum and then you can check every 14 days this data get updated now if you just hover your mouse uh, you can get all the information related to this client uh the rssi signal to noise because this is the wireless client right rx dx the mac address of client the channel which channel uh, it is operating and uh, all the major events as well on right hand side you can see the re authentication event onboarding event all the sort of things you can get now if you want to troubleshoot more you can come here and see what is the issue priority one issue for this customer or this client this golden and here the first one is network latency for application webex meeting is above threshold so this is 262 millisecond so definitely video may not work presenting presentation may not work on the webex so that is the priority one uh, issue then other than that you can see the latency for microsoft office is above the threshold of 262 it is also causing the p1 issue so there are some issues also registered and uh, you can see the topology as well so similar like device 360 you can get this kind of top topology that this is the ipad of this user it is getting connected uh, like this so the connection is like this and uh, some of the event as well so you can export those events as well from here itself so if you want to check any of the event you can come and uh, check that the reason is eap timed out right here it is getting success it got the correct vlan and all right everything gets successful but here uh, you may find some of the irregularity so you can troubleshoot as per the uh, event login now again you have this path trace api which is there so here as well you can start and run the path trace from this particular uh, source so you can select the source ip you can select the destination ip you can select the protocol and you can start once again it is hanged a little bit wait so like uh, earlier i showed you same like that you can select the port uh, uh, source and destination protocol whatever the protocol you can use and get some information now uh, the more detail you can find it here again this is the username and uh, this is the ip address this vlan that users belong to uh, and 2.4 gigahertz of band and frequency that user is using the rf related thing for this user personalized information you can get it from here right connectivity related as well like rx and tx and dns requests props right based on that you can get some idea now uh, let's troubleshoot one issue here it is mentioned that network latency for this webex meeting is above threshold 262 so that type of issue you want to troubleshoot click on that issue one second it is not loading actually there is an issue. Yeah, let's focus on that. So you can see uh, that issue wireless client that is also P1 wireless client uh, took long time to connect this particular SSID on this IP on this band, right? Excessive time due to association failure. Everything is mentioned, even the reason they have mentioned, I mean, DNAC has mentioned excessive time due to association failure. So uh, you can 
troubleshoot that particular client why the client has this type of excessive taken excessive time for the association because association has some specific seconds within that association timer if the client is sending the association request to access point if it is taking too much time then uh, uh, it may gives the failure so there could be an issue with the device as well so you don't know you need to check with the other device and then try it out but most of the time uh, this type of information you may get and if you come and if you want to resolve it you can come and resolve it so next time you may not find that type of issues a p1 issue uh, apart from that uh, let's check other client okay now let's focus on this grace click on that so he is in the good health and fair health good health fair health good health everything is look looking good but during this time it is in the fair health so client score is 7 but then it's also fine but here you can see some of the priority two issues that uh, this client is disconnected from this uh, uh, API with this SSID. So due to some timeout, it may get disconnected, but you can click and check the issue as well, right? So here uh, you can get more description on the issue. Now uh, you can get the information related with its MAC address and the device model where it was, yeah and uh, suggested actions uh, dns center is also given so you can try it out and restart the device and then you can try it out again so the type of suggestion you may get and uh, mostly for wireless type of issue you can solve by this way but some of the issue may related with the dhcp association or uh, uh, association timer related thing or eap related thing so in that case you need to check with the access point as well or you need to check with the client as well so it is the it has both the possibilities until and unless you dig deep into the issue you may not find but on high level you may get the information that this could be the reason due to this uh, happening and you also get that event information right so that is uh, related with client but that's what we discussed for wireless client for wired client as well that we are having this much of information and uh, we can uh, filter wired client on the dashboard from uh, the filter which are available so here you can see type is wireless but when i click on wired all the wired client i can see Yeah, click on wired. It's taking time, but yeah, you can see some of the wireless client. Now, those are the video surveillance camera, but at the end point is. Yeah, here you can see Microsoft Workstation, Apple, MacBook Pro, whatever. And the name as well of the user. You can click on the user. And you can get all the information, the MAC address, the device, the IP address, and all, right? It is failed. That connection is failed. So you can also find that. The client has failed to obtain IP4 address from DHCP server. So th this is the simplest way you can get that type of information and then you can troubleshoot it, right? So you can do this type of suggested way of troubleshooting. In case if you have other way of troubleshooting, you can try it out your own way. But this is the uh, suggested way to troubleshoot, right? then you can resolve that issue for this particular client same thing the detailed information everything is mentioned here you can see that ip address is from apipa 
that's why uh, it is not getting the IP from DHCP. So once you correct your DHCP, once you troubleshoot your DHCP, then client may get the correct IP and then it will be put into correct uh, VLAN and then correct access provided. So that was our client dashboard and client 360. Now let's double click on application. In too much time. Let me just restart this browser one second. I guess there is some issue with lab. So I'm trying to figure out one second. And it may take some time. So please be on hold. Uh, we need to finish this uh, reassurance completely end to end. Right. So next time we'll meet, we'll start with this provisioning and list related uh, demo, fabric creation and all. And only one lecture may required for this platform so okay it may not work i don't think so because it's taking too much time so let's close the meeting today and uh, yeah whenever we meet again uh, i will show this last step of application assurance and then we can proceed with the next uh, remaining topics okay all right and next weekend i'm not available so next weekend won't i uh, there won't be any classes so keep a note on that uh, sir, I have a small doubt, sir. Yeah, tell me. Uh, so, sir, suppose uh, we have a successfully onboarded uh, one of the wireless controller uh, with the DNAC, right? And integration also done. So, let's say uh, for some time, after some time, the D connectivity between the DNAC and controller goes down. And in between, uh, I got a request to, to do some configuration in the controller. Mm -hmm. So I'll do the some configuration. Let's uh, say uh, I created one SSID uh, in that controller. So what will happen uh, once the connectivity between the DNAC and controller will restore? So then you need to resync the controller, right? Because on DNAC, there is no SSID configure. But actually, uh, during the connectivity loss, you configured the SSID and uh, WLC, right? Then whenever connectivity comes back, at the time you need to resync the device. So there is a specific workflow under provisioning. Select that device and resync the device. And then uh, the configuration will get synced. Okay, sir, fine, fine. And yeah. sir, is there any uh, sources of the study or to get more knowledge on this? Uh, you can try it out on Google, everything is available. So you can get more details on that public uh, sites most of the time, okay. right? So, yeah. So, Razia, uh, how many more sessions we are expecting to finish this? So, uh, to finish this course, we required, I guess, two sessions, two more sessions. That's all. Uh, because one session I will cover all the. Let me come with this screen sharing. Again, my DNAC is coming up. One second. So, let's finish that assurance piece completely by today. And then I will tell you how many sessions we did. Yeah, so as we are talking, how many more sessions? So one session is for platform. The DNS Center is a platform. Uh, other session is required for demo, in which uh, I'll, I'll show you the provisioning task and the list related configuration, whatever uh, we are doing, uh, like whatever the DNS Center is doing on the devices. I'll show you that and uh, fabric creation of single site. So there's the three uh, main uh, topic is pending on demo and uh, one of the wireless workflow related with this uh, lab. So AP onboarding and all. Uh, so that is one thing. And other than that, uh, platform. So platform theory and demo can be covered in one, one lecture only. So maximum two lecture we need. Uh, so yeah, then we can wrap it up. Again, it is taking too much time. Okay, it may not work. I don't think so. Taking too much time. So yeah, let's meet on next uh, or next to next. Whenever we meet, uh, I'll show you this. Okay, and uh, then rest of the things we'll cover, whatever the pending things. Okay, bye guys.